Welcome to the hunt. Good afternoon and welcome to HuntCast. Greg and Doug here. We're glad that you can tune in. Today, March the 24th. Weather doesn't seem like it's March 24th, but nah. we'll, uh, we'll let that roll. Yeah. See what happens this week. But we got a pretty exciting episode this week. Unfortunately, there was a lot of stuff that happened in the industry this past week that we're going to get into. But we are going to start off with our third bow breakdown. And this week we got the uh, OK Canadian Company, A, <laughs> up out of Saskatchewan. Yes. And we're talking about APA Archery. And these bows are pretty, pretty badass. Really cool bows. They've been around for quite a while. So, Doug, jump in here. We got what bow we got today. So, today we're going to talk about the APA Black Mamba 29. Mamba. So, yeah. 29 inches, axle to axle. It has a uh, six and a quarter brace height. Comes in at a measly 3.5 pounds. Yeah, So, baby. super light. Draw is adjustable from 24 to 30. Mm-hmm. And it's 40, 80 pounds. So... Without five pound increments, so it's solid yeah, it's 10, ten pounds. pounds. Yeah. yeah, ten pounds each, and it has a eighty uh, percent let off, and that's not adjustable. So, eighty percent across the board, regardless of you know what what weight you're going to shoot, and it comes in at a screaming three hundred and fifty five feet per second IBO. Yep, and so this bow is real tiny. We've had it for about a week now. Super super small. Yeah, kind of feels like a toy in your hand for how light it is. Yeah. And what's funny is, so I'm actually looking in the catalog right now. So the the Black Mamba version is available in 29, 33, 36, and 38. So you want a screaming target bow, 3D bow, that 38 will do it for you. Yeah. But what's cool about this bow is APA is one of the only companies that puts out kinetic energy. So at 70 pounds, this bow has 97.97 pounds of kinetic energy when it lands. So that's pretty heavy to, to hit something with. And, you know, Doug mentioned how light it is. It is 3.55. So it's, again, I felt paperweights that more, way more than that. Yeah. So we went ahead and did a little research on some of the light bows, quotes, their light bows on the market. So you have the Matthews Lift, which has been screaming all about their lightweight. It comes in at 3.99, we'll call it four. Yeah, and these are all carbon bows, by the way. Yeah, We're well, the lift is not carbon, and the darton is not carbon. Oh, that darton sequel? Yep, the sequel okay. is not carbon. Okay. Both of those are aluminum risers. Okay. So then you go to the Hoyt Carbon RX-8, which is their new flagship carbon bow this year. Yep. That comes in in a straight four. Then you have the PSC Mach 30, which is a really nice bow. That's going to be the closest to the Black Mamba at yeah. 3.6. <laughs> then you have the Carbon 1 from Bowtech at 4.5. And then the Darton Sequel 31 at 4.45. So right. we call it four and a half for round numbers. Yeah. But so price wise, and this bow retails, suggested retail is, I believe, $13.99, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. <clears throat> and I got to go back into the book to find that answer. I believe it's $13.99. Yes. Yes. So suggested retail. Right. That's what they're telling you is the suggested retail, $13.99. So you're, you're playing. You know, big boy prices. Yeah. But the bow has a whole lot more features. So, you know, besides it being super fast, not adjustable let off, and lightweight, you get what they call their tool center on the bow. Yeah. Which gives you the broadhead sharpener, the broadhead turner or tightener, a knock turner. And this bow is field strippable to take your strings and cables off if you do have a, you know, horrible. (laughs) <laughs> accident <laughs> but there is a pin that comes out near the grip that you can lock your cam in place and decable it and destring it and put it all back together in the field mm. without a bow press so you're getting a whole lot of stuff for that price yeah not to mention if you've ever seen one of these bows they're all kind of named after snakes so you have the black mamba the king cobra and the serpent they all have like snake fangs on the front <laughs> yeah and that's your bow hook So you don't have to have, you know, a hook in your tree. Now, on this one, it's a single. 
the king cobra it's like a dual fang deal and i feel a little more comfortable hanging that off of a limb yeah rather than this little single one but, yeah right and if you remember last week we talked about these guys a little bit um these guys are one of the only ones still doing solid limbs yes yeah so it's a lot of speed a lot of stuff going on for a pretty lightweight bow yeah real aggressive oh yeah yeah, real aggressive, and it's it's a real short, and that's how they get away with you know such a light weight. It's just a it's a real short riser. riser yeah, it's not a parallel limb, Mm-mm. so that's why they can get away with that short riser. Probably not as stable as some of the others. You know, I don't know if I'd want to take it out west and shoot. Oh yeah, definitely seventy not. yards. Mm-mm. You know, Mm-mm. across open open field, but no, as a as a tree stand bow. Oh, or I'll be you know I sit in a blind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what it's for, I guess. Yeah, I think, you know, putting a big hold on something that, you know, 50, 60, 70 yards in the open, like an elk or a yeah. deer or something, I don't, Antelope, I don't yeah. see anybody holding that that still. No, no, definitely um, not. But if you're kind of, you know. 20, 30 yards coming yeah, out of a tree or a blind. You're hanging off of the yeah. saddle and you're contorting and, you know, then, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's what it's designed for. So I don't know if I'm real excited about the draw and the saddle, but yeah the, you'll see if you if you follow us on youtube as well we're going to do that bow breakdown today so we did get a, a, a scotch of a turn down <laughs> 60 pounds man it's it's aggressive at 60 pounds yeah so yeah it is the uh, yeah but you'll get to see all that we're gonna shoot it through the crano with our arrows and give you the low down there yep and you'll get to see it in person because it's funny doug's a little bit shorter than i am so it, it still looks small on him yeah but I'm six foot two. It it literally feels like a toy in your hand. Yeah. So yeah, it's weird, but definitely worth a look. They do some serious customizations where they'll actually coat your cam. If you want a special cam color, if you want the riser inserts done, they'll engrave your name on a limb pocket. Just a whole lot of stuff that they can do that they offer. So we recently just brought them into the store and they're one of the only companies that still does a hundred pound limb. Yeah, not which just is nuts. I don't know who would want to draw that bow, but <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, especially that aggressive. Yeah, and well, that's what I mean. Like, I can't imagine eighty pounds with that bow. No, no, forget about a hundred. No. In the thirty-three, we did sell a thirty-three that was customized for someone, and it was eighty pounds. And he was like, "Well, you could shoot it." And I'm like, "No, no, no, I don't. I'm not even going to worry about that. You can, you can do that. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, so that's that's gonna be our bow breakdown today on YouTube." So it'll be the APA Black Mamba 29. You can check them out at... <laughs> should have wrote this part down. It's APAarchery.com. They have a huge YouTube page. Um, they do a lot of videos shooting the 100-pound limbs. They do all kinds of arrow testing. So definitely, you know, one to take a look at. Yeah. They are out of bigger Saskatchewan, Canada. Okay. So check them out, apaarchery.com. Yeah, or if you're local, come down to the come shop. Come down to the shop. We got we have a couple more. We have the Serpents and a Mamba Air, which is kind of like a young adult bow, women's bow, a little bit lighter, a little bit less aggressive. Yeah. So we'll have those coming next couple of weeks. But that's the, about the only downfall coming from Canada. It takes forever for stuff to get through yeah. customs. Yeah. So. Okay. But so before we jump into our big, 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 big talk today... But we had ASA Fort Benning this weekend. Yes. Yes, we did. Wet. Very wet. Yes. <laughs> if you saw some of the pictures or videos from Fort Benning, yes. and I saw pictures, there was guys almost standing knee deep in water. Yes. And that's the, I don't, I don't find that fun. Like, <laughs> no, but it wasn't raining at that point. Right. I it, think it early, in the, yeah. early in the week, it was raining and then rain stopped, but the damage had been done. Oh, yeah. That picture I sent you, mm-hmm. yeah, they're wearing muck boots yep. and they're, a couple of inches from going over top of the boots. Yeah. And yeah. I know practice day, I think, was Thursday, and it was raining. Yeah. And, you know, they all had their little clear covers over their bows <laughs> and umbrellas all over the place. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, not my type of fun to shoot a 3D tournament in, for sure. No. But. No, that one picture, the pin was just barely hey, above the yeah. water. Yeah. It was just sticking out. Like, little, oh, yeah, that's where I got to stand. Cool. Yeah. A couple of inches above the, the water line. So, crazy. But, uh, so, we... A lot of movement this week. Not a, a lot of the big names not in there. Yeah. So we'll start with women's known. Cassidy Cox was your winner there. She's a darting shooter. Morgan Rivers, and then Kina Stevens. I believe you she said she's elite. elite, right? Yeah, she's an elite shooter. So then we go to known pro Kyle Douglas up the top. Curtis Broadway, Dan Johnson finished that out. 
Then you had Men's Open. This, this was a, a pretty big swing of people because a good friend of ours who ended up coming in fourth, Benny Barger, who shoots PSC and is the sales manager, I believe, for B3. So he shoots for B3 as well. He was in the shoot down and I didn't get to see any of it because we had a pretty big event going on last night at the, sh- at the shop. But he unfortunately came in fourth. Chance Bobuff came in first. Dan McCarthy, that was his first podium, I believe. I don't think he podiumed last week I don't or believe two weeks so. ago. No, I don't believe uh, And then Jacob Marlowe came in third. And it was funny because I was watching car- com- yeah, Competition Archery Media Instagram, I think it was on Thursday, and they were interviewing a bunch of shooters and said if there was one person on the ASA tour that you wouldn't want to date your daughter, who would it be? <laughs> and when I tell you, like, everybody said Jacob Marlowe. Hmm. And it was just funny. And then they interviewed him, and he said Chance Bobuff. Okay. But we'll go to Women's Pro, Sharon Wallace, coming in big. Aaron McLattery came in second. Kaylee, and I didn't write her last name down, and I don't know why. So, Kaylee, I apologize if you're listening. (laughs) But she came in third. And then Senior Pro, why didn't I not write this guy's first name down? I don't know. I only have Owens written down. Hmm. So I apologize there, and then I have Jeff Hopkins, I have his whole name, and Harold <laughs> Kogar, so I apologize. Yeah. And then senior known was Randy Morocco, the Hammer came in second, yep. Tim Gillingham, and Mike Holbert came in third. So I'm going to reflect back to a comment I made, I think it was two weeks ago or three weeks ago when they were at Foley. Yep. I don't see Levi's name in there. Uh, nope, didn't see him. I'm chalking it up to the arrows. Could be. <laughs> Could be. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. But, but no. So they, they fought through a lot of crap weather. and I don't think Tim has seen the big podium either, has he? he no, he wasn't. Did, no, he wasn't fully, didn't he? No, he came in second fully. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, second fully. So. so you guys are fighting through some stuff early in the yeah. season. But yeah. we got a lot more shooting to do, so not a big deal. They'll figure it out, I'm sure. Oh, listen, those two guys are the, you know. Yeah. That, they're the, that's the least of same thing with Danny McCarthy. I mean, Danny McCarthy last year, I think he was on every single podium throughout the whole season. Yeah. So, and Paige missed it. Tonja missed it. Which is, that's, of all of them, that's those are probably the most surprising. surprising Yeah, yeah, the most. Yep. And I'm sure the weather had a lot to do with it. Oh, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. I know I did see something Paige said she didn't, normally she doesn't shoot her fat arrows, her 23s in the rain. Yeah. And, but because she just built a setup the week prior, she didn't have field arrows for it. Okay. So, I don't know if I can use that as an excuse, but, <laughs> you know, I shoot 27s for 3D, so yeah. rain, snow, heat, whatever, doesn't matter. Yeah, I missed something, I missed something, it was my bad. Right. But, so, we're going to we're gonna jump into this, but we're going to precursor this conversation with, we are not lawyers, we are giving our opinion on the situation, and we're not trying to argue with anybody, everybody has their own opinion. Yeah. We're not trying to start anything. We're giving you <laughs> what we know by printing out the papers that we have printed out yeah. of lawsuits, patents, right. so on just, and so forth. And it's all public knowledge. All it's public all, knowledge, correct. It's all available to everybody. So so we're just going to give our breakdown. Obviously, this is a little different because, one, Doug and I both know the owners of Athens very well, and we were an Athens dealer. So, Doug, lead us off what we're going to talk about first here. Yes. Yeah, so... It, I guess the news broke on what's Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? Mm-hmm. Wednesday morning. So the news broke Wednesday morning that Athens Archery was shutting their doors. Mm-hmm. Just all of a sudden, no advance notice. Nope. Just bang. Doors are closed. 8.30 in the morning, I got my email. Yeah. And yeah, I think probably about an hour later, it hit Facebook. Mm-hmm. I think Tracy posted something on Trace, uh, Facebook about an hour yep. later or so. So... Yeah, just out of nowhere, kind of blindsided everybody, yeah. and yeah, it's over. You it's know, over. Had, had a little fire sale on parts. Thursday, Thursday mm-hmm. and Friday, getting rid of all the parts. And Wednesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Was it Wednesday Yeah, Thursday? they were shut down by end of business on Thursday. Okay. So, okay. So, yeah, two days, empty the, the warehouse out, and it's over. It's it. Yeah. So, it's a, it's a bummer, number one. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you both as a Athens dealer and somebody who knows Jim and Tracy well. So obviously, everybody kind of knew why the reason everything went the way it went. So if you're not familiar, 
In the beginning of the year, Athens introduced the new Axis line of bows, which had their AccuTune cam. Their AccuTune cam was a tunable cam system. Obviously, we mentioned this last week when we were talking about the history of bows and so yeah. on and so forth. It's funny how this all happened yeah. three days after literally right. last week's episode where we this the whole yep. episode was based on mm-hmm. patents and other companies, how they feed off each other. And yep. yeah, so it's kind of strange how yeah. it all happened. So we, uh, we weren't the reason for it. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> but so basically, you know, everybody knows that Botech two years ago, I believe it was, right? Three, two years ago, three years ago? Um, two years ago. Two years ago. Came out with their deadlock cam system, which was a tunable cam system. Oh, no. Botech's had that for more than two years. Uh, uh, was it? You're talking about the... The tunable. Yeah, that, that's been... I don't know the exact year, but I know... Okay. It, it's at least two. It's, it's, probably, it's probably, probably, probably closer to four years, honestly. Okay. So regardless, yeah. they've had it for a little bit. Yeah. We had mentioned last week, you know, that when they came out with this, that we obviously knew that Jim had figured out to to study this and make sure that there wasn't going to be any issues. Regardless of what we think, because we're not the lawyers, we don't have the money in the game. Botech seemed that this bothered them. So they filed a lawsuit in February of 24. Yep. Um, yeah. Just yeah, two, February 9th. February 9th. Yep. Yep. So... Sometimes stuff, you know, they handle stuff outside of court. You know, they do this because they want it to be known that, hey, this is what we're doing. But normally they get together, you know, companies get together and figure some crap out. It is what it is. And nobody really ever hears of it. This was obviously not the case when we received our email on Wednesday. So, Doug, you have Botex here. We looked yep. at the cable system. Yeah. I have... My Athens Axis 31 here, we looked at the cam system. Yeah. My opinion, again, my opinion, I don't, aside from the fact that both of them move the cam, I don't see a similar thing about them. So I'll let you make your opinion, and then we'll kind of go to what the lawsuit says. Yeah, well, my <laughs> my opinion, and I'll preface this by saying, you know, I've I've got both, right? Mm-hmm. I shoot a Bowtech. Right. I shoot an Athens. Mm-hmm. So I have no brand loyalty. Right. I've got three different brands on the rack, and I shoot every one of them. Right. So I'm not a one a fanboy in in right. you know, a certain brand that I just you know live and die by. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter to me. But as I read through the, I you know the the complaint right. from both uh, from Botech, it's kind of broad. It it doesn't give specifics on how right. the the cam is tuned. It just says a tunable cam, right? Which is very broad. Yeah. So if if that is the case, mm-hmm. where their their complaint is that they have a tunable cam, right? Then yeah, I kind of get where they're coming from. Sure. But they do it in a different way. Mm-hmm. It's it's I mean it's similar. Yeah. It's very similar yeah. in how they do it. One is one is you know threads and and kind of a corkscrew right. deal, and the other one is a smooth axle where a little bar pops out. Yeah, and, and it the kind of pushes over. the cam over. Mm-hmm. So. They do it in a different way. They accomplish the same exact thing. Right. And I think that's where the issue is. Again, obviously, we're not lawyers, yeah. so we don't know. And, you know, you read through it, it's just a bunch of, you know. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of legal. Yeah, legal yeah, that, legalese. Like, that's where lawyers don't know how to type full sentences. I'm horrible <laughs> at typing full sentences, but, man, like, it's like, but, 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 stop. But, yeah. but, 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 stop. And then, hey, yeah. finish the damn sentence. I want to know what you're talking about. Yeah. But. Yeah, so basically that's where, you know, Doug and I are both at. We we get it. Now, I, you know, specifically took the Athens that I have now because they were, you know, closing up. So I wanted to have one to hunt with. We had sold a whole bunch of them. Obviously, I got a lot of phone calls from customers because it did go to the interwebs. And, you know, oh, my God, what is this? What is that? What is this? And what I did was, one, I didn't fire show any of the bows. Two, I called and talked to Jim and Tracy and ordered parts. So I will have parts just for for the fact to, you know, if something does break, hopefully we can fix it. Right. But a lot of people, when this all happened, they kind of fire sailed, whether it was owners or dealers, they were blowing these bows out. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with the bow. No, no, it's a great bow. Right. It's- so super smooth, super, you know, all this. And my whole thing when all this happened after we got this was, you know, if because I don't know the the back 
end of it. I don't know the, you know, was there letters involved? Was there talks involved? I don't know any of that. We just know what is, as we said before, public knowledge. So you can print the lawsuit, you can print the patents and all that fun stuff. So if there was none of that beforehand, to me, it was a gigantic company being scared of a little company yeah. that came out with something a little bit better that was, in my opinion, on a better bow for drawability, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. And that's, it just came down to a corporate deal where they're like, well, we're just going to put them out of business. But so what did, what exactly, where did that go? That little highlighted piece. So I'm going to have Doug read this highlighted piece. It's on like page three or four of the yeah. lawsuit. Yeah. So, and then this, this is where, this is why I highlighted this because this is where it's kind of broad and it's not specific, but it says that the defendant promotes, which in, the, in this case, the defendant is, is Athens. Mm -hmm. Athens promotes and advertises that the accu, well, they're calling it accused, but <laughs> accused instrumental instrumentalities <laughs> have incorporated a so-called accutune cam or pulley, which allows the user to optimize bow performance and accuracy by laterally adjusting the bow's pulley left or right, depending upon tuning needs, as illustrated below from a screenshot of Athens' YouTube video. So basically, what Bowtech did is they went right to YouTube, mm -hmm. and they just kind of used that as the, as the fuel for this fire. Right. And the breakdown that, that Athens has on YouTube, they just use that as Exhibit A, Exhibit B. Mm -hmm. So just reading that, like I said, it's very broad. It doesn't it doesn't talk about how how the 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 cam is moved left and right. It just mentions the fact that it does move right. left and right. Mm -hmm. So to me, you know, as as a layperson, when I read that, if that is the case, if if the patent is simply having a cam that moves left or right, then yeah, that would be, mm -hmm. in my opinion, an infringement. Sure. It's done in different ways, right. but the bottom line is you're able to move your cam left or right by turning a screw. Right. So, so and that, that's the downfall. As, as Doug just said, it's broad, so it doesn't say how the cam is moving. It just says the cam is moving. Right. So take any bow out there and put a shim in it. For Matthews, for example, put a top hat in it. Right. The new PSEs with their half-moon shims, the half-moons on a prime. Guess what you're doing? <laughs> you're moving your cam. Yes. Granted, it may not move a quarter of an inch on the axle. Right. But you're moving it. Yes. So why isn't there 50 other lawsuits out there going after Matthews, PSE, Prime, you know, whoever? Yeah. I think. Well, it, it's it's it because they're, they're on the same level as far as right. the corporations, right? Yep. So, you know, you've got Bowtech. Is I'm, a, I'm glad that Doug researched this part yeah. of it because it's it's pretty funny. Yeah, so Bowtech is a sixty million dollar a year company mm -hmm. owned by JDH Investment Group. Yes, they have 101 employees. Matthews is a sixty two million dollar company with 122 employees. Mm -hmm. Athens is a six million dollar company with 14 employees. Right. So it's basically just the big boy just mm -hmm. squashing the little guy. Yep. Just like. You know, Home Depot did to all the little mom and pop hardware you know, stores. Hardware mm -hmm. stores that they don't exist anymore because right. they can't compete. Yep. And that's really what about and that that's just corporate America. Right. And it sucks. It definitely sucks. It sucks. Yeah. And but that's just that's just the world we live in now. So yeah, just unfortunate. It's unfortunate are all around. It's it's right. It's not, not only did it it obviously hurt Athens as a company. You know, they shut down. They had fourteen employees. Yeah. You know. Thankfully, it wasn't 100 and some employees, but 14 employees that now have to find jobs. Yep. Dealers who, you know, thankfully for us and, and unthankfully at the same time, Athens was a very big brand for us. Yeah. Just because of the drawability of the bow. But we only had four bows left in the shop. Yeah. There are some dealers that have 10 or 20 bows. Sure. And now what do you do? So, as I said before, I didn't fire sale any of the bows because they're still brand new. Granted, you know, because the doors are closed, there is no warranty. Right. Really, unless you have a D-Lamb or, you know, cam falls apart for no reason. Right. There's no real warranty on a bow out there anyway. No. 
you know, you drop it out of your tree stand. Doesn't matter if it's a Matthews, a PSE, a Hoyt. It, you dropped it out of your tree stand. You're yeah. paying to fix it. Yeah, yeah. You dry fire bow, same thing. Yeah. So the people that freaked out because oh the warranty's gone, you know how many people own used cars? Your used car warranty is usually thirty days. Yeah. So okay, your thirty days is up. Something breaks. Guess what? You're paying for it. Yeah. Well, um, you know my issue with that is the you're taking a loss. You're guaranteed a loss. Right. So if you have these bows and you're just dumping them. You're taking a loss, guaranteed yeah. mm-hmm. taking a loss. Absolutely. If you hold on to the bow and shoot it for the next five, six, seven, ten years, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. and with no issues, now you don't have a loss. Right. And so, most people that are big in archery buy a bow every three years anyway. Right. So, yeah. Now, you know, take care uh, of your equipment. Yeah. And, and down the road, resale value won't be there, obviously, but that's okay. You know, well, listen, most bows, they lose their value anyway after a few years with new technology coming out. So, yeah, I just, I don't see why you would take the loss right up front. It doesn't make sense to me. No. You know, just roll the dice and hopefully nothing happens and it's not even an issue. Right. So and that's, I tell customers all the time to come in that are looking for a new bow. Well, I got to sell mine. Keep it as a backup. Right. If there's nothing wrong with the bow, keep it as a backup. Yeah. God forbid you do drop one out of a tree stand or forget that it was on the back of your truck and start traveling down the highway and it falls off. Yeah. Well, you still have a bow to shoot for that yeah. season. No doubt. Because it is. It's like a car. You don't. You know, the value doesn't stay there. You just, the minute you drive it off the lot, you lost value already. So just shoot the thing. Yeah. And it's not like there are inherent problems anyway. I mean, right. Athens is, was such a super nice bow. Yep. There were never issues anyway. Mm-hmm. So why would you anticipate issues right. all you of know, a sudden? Right. If there was a certain model that, you know, had known problems, okay. Yeah, you know, different may, story. Yeah. But right. these things were just rock solid and there were never any issues with them. So no, no. to think you would have issues in the future is kind of silly. So, but, but yeah. So, you know, the unfortunate part in that me being in the industry as long as I have and Doug understands it, even though he doesn't come from the industry, unfortunately, shit like this happens all the time. Yeah. You know, somebody suing somebody because of something that doesn't exist or it's just to try to get somebody to fold up yeah. or whatnot. So most recent, we'll go back to 2020. Right. Um, and the, the plaintiff in the current lawsuit was sued by Matthews. Yes. And Matt McPherson, and for those of you that have heard me talk, I'm not a big Matthews fan, but, you know, no. at the same time, it's, you know, there's a copy of a letter that Matt McPherson wrote to Botech saying, hey, you're infringing upon our patents. We can fix this this way, or, you know, we have to take it to court. And that went on for, they filed the lawsuit eight years before it was settled. Yeah. But Botech lost. And they listed, how many bows was it? Oh, man. A ton. It was like 24 bows yeah, or something. 20, 25, 30 bows, I bet. Two, two four, six. One, two, three. 13 times three. Times three. So yeah. that's how many bows. Almost 40, 39 bows. Yeah, so. Almost 40 bows. Which um, their, basically their entire lineup. Right. It started all the way from the Atomic all the way up to the Specialist 2. Yeah. I think the only ones that didn't get hit because this was in 2020, which was when the Reckoning came out, if I'm not mistaken. Right around there, yeah. Yeah, so sure. the Reckoning was not included. But, you know, there's Atomics, Destroyers, Invasions, Insanities, Realms, yeah, the Specialist, Infinities, Fuel. There's the Eva Shockey Signature Series. <laughs> like, they had a slew of infringements, and yeah. they lost. Yeah. So, you know, obviously... This happens all the time. right. But, Just like, uh, our, like we spoke about last week, you know, there's so many different patents out there and, and companies borrow from others mm-hmm. and, you know, this happens all the time. All the time. The difference is Matthews and Botech are on the same level as far as company and, and revenue, revenue and sustainability. Right. So they were able to absorb that. Yep. And Athens and Jim and Tracy are not on that level. Nope. So. They just didn't have the, the you know, the resources to, to fight the fight, you know, they just couldn't fight the good fight. So mm-hmm. that's what happens when yeah. you got to pay patent lawyers and other lawyers and, and yeah. you know, to go at, to go up against, again, the investment group. Right. You know, there's a lot of investment groups coming into this industry. A lot of people don't know that. They think pure archery is just pure archery. Right. They got bought out last year in April by JDH Investments. So now you got somebody with a whole lot of money in their pocket. Yes. That can just do what they want to do. Yes. 
but I'm just I'm, I'm reading the letter that Matt McPherson sent to the retailers. As a valued member of the Matthews Archery family, I wanted to make you aware of a recent legal victory over Bowtech Archery. My intellectual intellectual property holding company, MCP IP, filed a patent infringement lawsuit against Bowtech over two years ago. The lawsuit was filed after six years of unsuccessful attempts to reach a fair private resolution with Bowtech. Bowtech has now admitted that more than 40 of their bows, as well as the deadlock light octane quiver, infringe 228 claims. <laughs> Like, Jesus, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. This, if this is the case, it's one. Yeah. You had 228 claims yeah. for patent infringement. So it's, you know, again, though, you're you're comparing somebody that makes $60 million a year and $60 million a year to somebody that's got $6 million in revenue. Yes. So, you know, they figured, okay, we'll stand up and fight it. Obviously, they lost, and it sucks. And but it didn't affect them. Nope, it, didn't change the damn thing. Life goes on, and they just move on. Right. You know, whereas you know, with Athens, they they didn't even get to the point because you know, if you read the, if you read it, that if you you know, you read that filing, right. uh, they requested a jury, a jury, mm-hmm. and, and it never it, made it. That it never far. got that point nope. to that point. So, and which you know would have been interesting if they had got to that point. What um, happened? Yeah, who knows? Mm-hmm. But you know, Jim and Tracy just. Again, that's, you know, getting, getting to that point, you still have to spend money. Yes. So they're spending money. And from my understanding is they got to the point where they had enough money to pay their employees for the rest of this month. Yeah. So that hopefully they could find a job elsewhere. Right. In the meantime, and still be having an income where, you know, if they just went complete, you know, zero. Now they got employees that can't be paid. Yeah. And obviously those people are not going to be happy about that. Yeah. So things could have, you know, not that they're not worse, but it could have been a whole lot worse had yeah. they continued to try to get there. Yeah. So, you know, I, I give them some credit for doing that, making sure their employees are taken care of. They've been there, most of them, I think, for from when they took the company over yeah. nine years ago. Yeah. But, but you know, like you, <clears throat> like you said, it's trickle down too. So it's it's not just the Athens people, it's, it's the local shops like you. Mm-hmm. Even a guy like Eric, right? Yep. Eric from from Gas, you know, he gets affected because he made all the strings for right. for Athens, mm-hmm. and now how many thousands of strings is he not going to sell? Right, because Athens isn't producing bows anymore. Right, so it you know it, it just trickles down and it affects a lot of a lot of people. So it's just it's unfortunate, and you know it, it makes it what makes it worse is you know, like I said, we know Jim and Tracy, and you're not going to find. Two better people. No. Forget about in the in the bow industry, right. just on the planet, yep. right? They're just yep. they're just super people, and uh, you hate to see something like this happen mm-hmm. because you know with, with with those two, Athens wasn't wasn't just their business, right? Right? You know, yeah, where, they're a baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This 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 was this was their baby, and their they put everything into it. You yep. know, their whole life revolved around Athens archery. Whereas you know this. This pure archery group, whatever this this yeah, new they company don't care. is, it's a bunch of Wall Street suits that right. never probably don't shot even know a how bow. to shoot a bow. Right, so that that's what makes it worse. Yeah, just because you know they just and, and especially just where Athens was. You know, I I met Jim and Tracy the year they bought Athens, and it, it was finally becoming between some of the you know ambassador staff that they had and more dealers picking them up. The people were going. Hey, who the hell is this Athens company? Yeah. And then they touch a bow and they're like, well, now I know who they are. And it just became, you know, it was just starting to catch on where the name was getting there. They were starting yeah. to get dealers out West and, yep, you know, stuff like this happens. MFJJ. So. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, he, uh, he did a review on their bow. So it was just that. And I think maybe that, that might've come in, you know, that might've come into play. They started. Yeah, there was, there was a couple guys that did reviews that were like, well, if this is, you know, blah, blah, like. Yes. Don't get into that, but you're reviewing a bow. Yeah. Don't get involved with the legal side of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't know anything about. Yeah. So. But, no, but my point was, you know, some of the, some of the big names out oh, there yeah. were, st- they were starting to review these and put that Athens name out there. Right. And Athens was starting to get some traction. Absolutely. You know, they were starting to get some traction with the big boys. Mm-hmm. And that's probably where this came about. Right. Let's face it. If they, if they were a little tiny mom and pop that was selling, you know, 
five hundred bows a year. Right. Who cares? won't even bother. Yeah. You know. But obviously, but, it scared him enough. Yes. That, yeah. Oh crap! We better do something. Yes. And I actually, I tried to stay out of the whole Facebook deal. You know, as a as a dealer. But it's hard because you see some stuff. And again, you, when you know Jim and Tracy and you see people writing cer- certain things and I, Doug would be proud because I stayed like <laughs> way, way back. Yeah. You know, I could have jumped in, you know, with a full head of steam and just started going nuts, but I didn't. Yeah. But it's, I don't even know, like when I saw the first review from MFJJ and he must have mentioned that like what yeah. six seven yeah. times yeah a few times yeah and then i forget who the other person was that did one and it was like three or four times yeah and you know we're not at their level you know we're not monetizing every video and every podcast we do that's not what we're here for but when you have guys like that that you know they're big matthews nuts because at first the big thing everybody was talking about how mfjj was going to build the axis for his hunting rig this year. Yeah. All of a sudden that video got pulled and he's building a lift 33. Yeah. So when you have guys like that, that do things like that and you're putting comments out there to either the general public or now because you're big enough, you have these manufacturers looking at you and you're putting this info in their head. It's not the way to do it. You know, that's why we precursored this to we're not lawyers we don't know the background of it. We only have what anybody else can see. Right. And we're making our own, you know, knowledgeable, guesstimated opinions on what we're reading and the research we're finding. So, you know, we pull up, we pull up the, the Bowtech patent and there's, it, it doesn't show anything on the patent. It doesn't say anything on the patent and it's just a movable cam. Right. It's, just, it's very broad. Right. And so, I think that's, that's probably what, that's where the issue is. Exactly. It's so broad mm-hmm. that kind of anything falls in, into no, that. So you take any, any cam and, and Doug and I talked about this before we, we started recording is he has a solution here and I grabbed it off the rack. We looked in, there's threads on the axle. You can plainly see them. Yeah. You take the Athens, there's no threads in there. Okay, so that's not a copy. The axles are completely different. The solution has the deadlock, and obviously it's moving it across those threads when you turn it. Right. The Athens doesn't do that. There's a bar that comes outside of the little piece that's attached to the limb and pushes the cam. Right. So it's almost like a shim. Right. But you can go either left or right with it. Right, because if it's all the way in, the cam's going to come towards that limb. If it's all the way out, it's going to go towards your opposite limb. So the literally the only things, and I mean the boxes are completely different. That the everything is housed in. Yours yeah. has the big square on it. This is yeah. set right to the top of the limb. Yeah. They both use an Allen key. Yep. And they're both red. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's all I can figure out. Yeah. Um, and maybe Botech was pissed because they were like, "Hey, they made it red, the bastards." Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. But that's literally all we can find. Yeah. So, again, having just a broad statement of if it moves a cam, well, why aren't you suing every other bow manufacturer? Because you can technically move a cam. Right. So, yeah, I don't know. But, you know, there's obviously the Matthews Bowtech one. It was big because it made, like, bowhunting.com, archery talk, like, when that was all finalized. So, but there, we did find another one. Uh, don't glump in on this one. That was the, the Darton. Yeah. Right. Darton v Botech. yes yeah so again this happens all the time right. and it just happens to be the you know big players they kind of absorb it and they brush it off and they just it's business as usual uh-huh. and um, half the time like like i said unless we started googling this and researching it right you know all you, we had was the athens v Botech. yeah or Botech v athens yeah and that was you know we looked that up because obviously like we've mentioned a few times we know them I sell them. So we were trying to get the answers. But this one is something that just popped up because we typed in Botech lawsuits. And literally, this one, when was this one filed? Doesn't give me a date. But this is the, this is the funny part. You see where this one was filed at? Yeah, Delaware. Delaware. So oh, Botech. A lot of corporations are based in Delaware. So. Right. So Botech Pure Archery. So this one lists like everybody. Botech LLC, Botech Inc., Botech GP, Excalibur Crossbows, Excalibur Crossbow Holdings, and Excalibur Crossbow Investors, 
but it was filed in the state of Delaware because that is where JDH Capital, which is the investment group that owns Botec, is a Delaware limited partnership that is the sole member of Bowhunter Acqui- Bow Hunter Acquisition LLC, which is the sole member of defendant Botec LLC, which they're, they're the sole owner of blah, blah, blah. And it, it lists all of them here. But it was four infringements, correct? Yes. Four? Yep. One was a crossbow. Yes. And that was the, what was that? It's the dry fire? I, I don't know. The, I think it was the dry fire safety mechanism. But so they list again all of the, you know, patents and whatnot. Oh, this was filed in April 23. So this was yeah. like a year, a year ago. Yeah, like right now, a year ago. Yeah. And it does not or has not been completed. There has been no, no execution to as what happens to this. Right. But there's four of them. So that's, I mean, you have a company again, like Botech, and the more I see about this, so Matthews goes after Botech, Darton goes after Botech. I'm sure there's been other ones that went after Botech. I know there was a gentleman in Texas that filed. Now they yes. filed outside of court to get everything washed away, but he had gone to Botech when they came out with the center line. It was the, the it was a dampening system or something, wasn't it? Something in the center line limb or something yeah. that they came out with on a bow. This gentleman from Texas is an inventor. He went up there for a meeting, had them sign an NDA, and they signed the NDA. And then this gentleman in Texas files a patent on his invention. Yeah. Botech didn't want it. A week later, Botech files another patent for the same exact thing. Right. So they basically broke the NDA. So again, it was it was thrown out. So it's it's just funny. That leads us kind of into our next thing. So last week we talked about Kevin Struthers breaking the world record. Yep. So Kevin Struthers has been in the industry f- since 1986 designing bows. Yeah. He worked for Bowtech at one point. He if I read it correctly, owned Elite for a little bit before it changed hands. He then went to Obsession from 2011 to 2019 as their designer. Now did Jim work with him? That's I don't know. Elite. I I don't think so because I don't remember him being there when I worked there. Okay, I could be wrong, but so oh no. So he was there. That was oh six. So I was not at Elite until thirteen. So okay. Jim, well no, because I don't think Jim worked with them there because Jim was there when the outdoor group had it. So it was okay. after the fact. Okay, but. So he went from 2011 to 2019, he went to Obsession. In 2019, he left Obsession and went to Expedition, who I used to shoot for. May, dude makes an awesome bow. I'm not going to argue. He makes a great bow. He, at the end of the year, last year, I remember, as I said last week, he made a Facebook post that he was he had left Expedition, his contract with Expedition, and he was going to somebody new, and there was three new bows coming out, but he would not say who. Yeah. And then I happened to see a post from Obsession about wait till we unveil our our three new flagship bows. I was like, <laughs> you went back to Obsession. Yeah. So we're staring right now at the Obsession website. So there's three bows out there. And not that I we're trying to get anybody in trouble, but they have what's called the Perfex Cam. Yeah. The flight cam and the NT cam with Perfex tuning. Guess what? <laughs> it's a movable cam, man. Yeah. So, again, this is, it just takes me back to, I think because Athens was getting so much traction, now they had a bow that had a tunable cam. Yeah. They have a, which, which, in my opinion, having, I own the Bowtech with that, yeah. I think the Athens system is honestly better than the Bowtech system. Right. Because it was so, easier to move. Yeah. And, I mean, the bows that we sold, it took literally one arrow to tune it. Yeah. So you saw what way the tear was, move the cam, you were done. Yeah. Not that you couldn't do it. We've done it with a bow tech, but yeah. it usually takes more than one shot. Yeah. So I think it just became more of a, oh crap, this little mom and pop company is going to start digging into our pockets and taking sales. Right. We got to get rid of them. So again, now you have another company out there and now the pictures of their cams, unfortunately, I can't tell you anything about them. I just can tell you there is a piece attached to the loom or the screw that goes into the axle that's going to move it. Yeah. Other than that, I can't see how it moves. <laughs> you know, if somebody wants to send in a, an obsession, we will happily look at it. We'll do a bow breakdown on it. But 
And it's funny because after I worked for Elite, I worked with Obsession, and I don't remember okay. Kevin being there, and that would have been the time Kevin was there. Right. So, I don't know. Mm. But you and I met Dennis, the owner, two yeah. years ago at ATA. Yeah. And we looked at the Obsession boats. Yes. And they're a great boat. Don't get me wrong. But so the, the funny part is the flight cam, because we mentioned the world record last week, the flight cam and the NT cam are world record cam system with adjustable draw links and half inch increments, including the perfect tuning system for easy cam tuning. The draw cycle is incredibly smooth, record fast, and a solid back wall as always from Obsession Bows. Yeah. Literally what it says on their website. But again, I don't know how it moves or, or anything of that nature, but I just know it's there. Yeah. So again, it just takes me back to everybody's cam moves in some way. Yes. Whether it's a, a system that you're turning something to do it with or you're shimming it. It's moving the cam. Yeah. So, again, to have the generalized, oh, it moves the cam, we got to assume. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. A little hard for me to swallow on that one. Yeah. And, and you, you know, the ones who really suffer, I mean, other than, you know, Jim and Tracy obviously are suffering more than any of us. Mm -hmm. But we, as the archery community, really suffer because, right. you know, we, we've lost a, a fantastic bow company. Mm -hmm. We've lost... Because if if other companies could use that technology, because it's it's great te it's great technology. Sure. Instead of having to break it all down and and put shims in there, yeah. you know, this is great. Technology. No bow presses, no nothing. Yeah. So, you know, it's great technology that all of us should be able to, you know, enjoy yep. regardless of what what brand bow you shoot. Right. It kind of hurts all of us. Mm -hmm. So, I just wish that you know we could all just kind of get get along right yeah, and yeah and then uh, that's it's it's funny because you you hear me mention on here you've heard me mention on videos i've just been in the industry too long to care about the fanboy crap and you know do i hate matthews no do i dislike them yes but we have probably more customers that come in with a matthews for us to do something to i don't ship them a lot of the damn shop Right. It's a bow. Right. You shoot a bow, I shoot a bow. We're going to hang out and talk and bullshit, and I'm going to make fun of you for shooting at Matthews. That's all there is to it. <laughs> and, you know, so I, I've never really shot a bow that had, like, a, that fanboy base to it. Right. You know, I way back when I worked at Parker, I freaking shot a Parker. I shot a Winchester Stallion. Yeah. You know, I didn't shoot big name brand bows. I never have. Yeah. I happened to shoot Elite when I worked for them because I had a bow. Right. But. You know, now, like, I shot a PSC for target season, indoor target season this year. And Tracy had actually asked me before going to Lancaster, oh, are you shooting your Athens? No, I actually sold it to somebody and, yeah, I grabbed a PSC off the shelf. Yeah. You know? So I, I don't jump on those things. Are there certain things that I, I liked about the Athens more than I like about something else? Absolutely. It's the draw cycle. Yeah. So if you go back to early 2000s elite bows their big thing was the draw test draw ability so you go to a dealer and take the elite draw test and i mean there was elites that you can literally draw back and i could have walked around the store yeah with the bow drawn in one hand <laughs> and that was no joke like yeah that happened yeah and i think when because jim was there when he decided to do him and Tracy decided to open Athens. That was his goal was to beat that draw cycle. Yeah. And I'm not old, but I'm not a big guy. Like I don't shoot 70 pounds. 65 is now starting to hurt a little bit just because I'm getting older and my shoulders suck. But you know, I don't have to think about a 65 pound Athens, right? A 65 pound PSC, not happening. I got to turn it down some. Yeah. So it's, the the argue like and yeah am I part of it sure and I try not to do it and that's why I, before like I said I tried to stay out of all the conversations that happened on Facebook when everything happened on Wednesday but again I, I'm gonna bust your chops for shooting a brand and that's just because of the way I feel about the brand that's right. my opinion of the brand right do I not like you because you shoot that no right Doug came in he shot a Bowtech I don't right. like Bowtech but he came <laughs> first time he came in the shop he came in with a solution yeah you know and here we are now we have a podcast <laughs> so yeah it's you're right it's 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 gotta be yeah we can bust chops like we're sitting around at the bar and yeah. you know make fun of each other but it's like Ford Chevy Dodge right right mm -hmm. it's the same deal what? so they're all good trucks right but 
you know, everyone's got their own preference. Mm-hmm. You know, same thing with the bows. I mean, there's really, all these big, big name bows. They're not bad bows. They're yeah. not. There's not a. They're, they're all. Make, yeah. They all make good bows. Right. So, yeah, it's not nothing personal. It's just personal yeah. preference. Right. And, but you know, I think what what really what drew me to Athens in the beginning is probably what did them in in the end. So, when I was first introduced to Athens, you know, meeting Jim and Tracy and and seeing, you know, how genuine they are as people and how much they cared about their customers. Right. And they were such a small business. And, you know, like when you had a problem, you call and Tracy answered the phone. Right. You know, you call call any of these big companies, you call Botech or you call Matthews, right. you know, you're getting an operator. Yeah. So the fact that they were a small company is what drew me to them in the beginning. And their their customer service is, you know, better than anybody else in the business. Bar none. There's there's no customer service that's better than Athens, which is what drew me to them as well. Right. But because they were small, and that's the downfall. Because mm-hmm. they were so small, they were easily manipulated. Yeah, it was a big. It was a, it had a huge and target on them because of the size. Yes, so they were they were just easy prey. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's that was the big draw to them, and that's in the end, that's probably what did them in. Right. And when uh-huh. Doug talks about customer service, so if there's any of the other Athens dealers listening, so. If you custom ordered a bow for a customer, not just like I was ordering a bow for the shelf. This was like, hey, somebody came in. I want this bow. I want it in this color. I want blah, 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 whatever. Tracy would hand write a card yeah. and put it in the bag. Yeah. Like, I want to see Mac Pearson. Yeah, I want to see, you know, somebody from JDH Capital yeah. writing cards out when somebody buys a bow tech. Not yeah. going to happen. No. So that's just the type of person or people they were or are and you know that's the the killer is like if i would call to order a bow unless tracy was on lunch i would get alex which was one of their employees yeah normally alex answered the phone or tracy answered the phone yeah but very much the same way when i talked to them last week obviously they were heartbroken and they were supposed to be at archery fest yeah and obviously they don't have bows to come to Archery Fest. And I made it a point to tell them, listen, just come down. Like, come and hang out. Right. Just be just, just be there. Just be Jim and Tracy. Right. Don't be don't Athens be, Archery. Right. Yeah, just come down, hang out. You know, we'll take you around the courses and all that stuff. They were there last year. Yeah. They weren't, but um, Jack, which was one of the reps, he came down with the trailer. Yeah. And... Tracy said to me, she said, we already still have it on the calendar, so we will probably be there at least one of the days. Yeah. And that's just them being there, even though of all the crap they're going through to come down, one, just to let them be themselves and, you know, see some people and talk to people and whatnot. But yeah, the fact that they were like, oh, well, you know, now that we're not doing this, we're not going to come, that tells me, you know, hey, they're still willing to we promised you we'd be there. We'll come and support you yeah. and and be there for you, not just because we're a, a bow company. We're going to come down and, and see what you have going on and help support that. Right. So that's that's a big thing that a lot of people don't know is they are a veteran-owned company. So that's another part that's you know, sucks. Yeah. So everybody talks about vets and, you know, they get treated like this and treated like that, and then you, you have something like this happen. Yeah. So definitely sucks. But, you know, we hope the best for them. And, you know, thankfully I have their cell phone numbers so I can reach out and check on them every once in a while. But Yeah. Yeah. The, but yeah, so, you know, lawsuits, it's kind of way of the game in this industry, which sucks just because there's so much going on. Yeah. And it's, you know, it is what it is. But so that's, if you didn't know about the one that was filed last year against Botech, you guys can follow that as it goes because I haven't seen anything on an outcome from it. But... I'm not sure if it's actually Darton, current Darton or Rex. Yeah. Assuming them for those infringements. Yeah. Because I believe Rex still has all those patents. They're not, you know, Randy's yet. Yeah. So I'm not sure exactly who filed that, but somebody did. And, but it's, you know, it's funny going back to what we spoke about last week. Mm -hmm. If H.W. Allen isn't killed in a car accident, but in 1979, none of this shit none happens. of this has happened. We don't, we don't even have this conversation because I, every one of these companies would be infringing. Yep, and so, I did see one, so I didn't know this, but Allen sued Jennings. Oh yeah, Jennings never licensed it. Oh okay, he just 
went and did it because yeah. he figured, well, I'm going to make else some money. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he did lose that battle. And that was a, and that was a different world, too. Oh, in, absolutely. In the 70s, yeah. it, was a, it was a different world. That it was a $100,000 lawsuit, not yes. a million-dollar lawsuit. Yeah, yeah. So it was a different world. and But yeah, so you know, it all goes back to patents. And if that didn't happen, it just changes the face of archery right. forever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy how it all works out. But and I tell you, we couldn't have read that last week's episode or this week's yeah. episode. Yeah, it's I unbelievable. Mean, so that's pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but we hope you guys enjoyed our take on us. it. And again, it's, we're not lawyers. It's our opinion. Yeah. We're just telling you how we feel after looking at it. We shoot bows every day. So it is what it is. Take it for what you take it as. Yeah. In the meantime, we will be back Easter Sunday with maybe an arrow breakdown, but okay. we are going to throw a bow in there because. I'm going to bring that Axis 31 because that was actually the next bow that we were going to break down. And okay. Maybe we'll break it down anyway. Just let people see it. Yeah, right. Yeah, because there's plenty of them out there. Plenty of them out there. So. And you can buy them super cheap but from yeah. certain places right now. Yeah. But we appreciate you guys tuning in, and we will talk to you next Sunday, Easter Sunday. Yes. So enjoy, and don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. We're going to break down that APA Black Mamba 29. Yeah. Until next week, we'll talk to you later. And we'll see you.